my channel VLSI Gyan. In this session, we will discuss about RTL linting. For an RTL design engineer, it is necessary to understand and use RTL lint. So let's get started. RTL lint or lint refers to a process of static code analysis performed on the hardware description language, whichever you are using, it can be a Verilog or VHDL. The linting process involves specialized tools, which are called linters. The specialized tools are called linters, which analyze the code for potential design issues. There can be any design issues, so they check for the design issues, coding style violations, and other errors that can affect the functionality performance or reliability of the integrated design. What is the purpose of using a lint, RTL lint? The main is it is very crucial step in the design process because it involves checking the RTL code for the design rule violations, coding errors, potential issues, functionality, performance and manufacturability of the chip all depends upon this. And uh, analyzes the code written in hardware description language. It checks for the all the possible errors and the warnings, whatever the code has. And it also sees that uh, the simulation and the synthesis you know, results are same. There is no mismatch between the synthesis and the simulation, pre-synthesis uh, and post-simulation, pre-synthesis uh, uh, simulation results and post-simulation uh, post synthesis simulation result. Okay, both are same. And we have certain tools available in the market, which the which are most common in the industry. Out of that, the top one is Spyglass, which was developed by Synopsys. Next is Real Intent, Lida. This is also developed by Synopsys and Surely. There are many. I have listed a few. So what are the rules these tools check actually? The rules, uh, they check for array rules, case rules case rules means if you are giving a using a case statement all the given uh, combinations are taken or not reset rules clock rules usage try set assign function and task delay latch instance instantiation then synthesis expressions multi driven ports simulation rules event and loop rules these are some of the common listed rules there are more much more number and it depends upon the tool which you are using so this is for the spy glass link next what are the common rules which most of all the linters check that is non-synthesizable constructs friends i have made a, a different video separate video in that i have explained about the synthesizable and non-synthesizable construct I will provide the link in the description box. If interested, you can please check that also. So uh, the common rules checked by the linters are non-synthesizable constructs, unintentional latches. We know that most of the time unintentionally latches are created. So if a latch is created, then this tool will uh, intimate the designer that a latch is created. Combinational loop, uh, unconnected ports, multi-driven signals, read write raise bit bit the mismatch bit overflow so these are some of the common rules which a linter will check so let us go into detail about all this what are these actually the first one we will discuss is non synthesizable constructs see friends we know that in very long we have uh, a synthesizable as well as non synthesizable constructs Synthesizable means they, that type of the constructs or the parts of the code or the segments which are totally converted into a hardware. You can directly translate them into a hardware because synthesis is a process of converting the Verilog code into a Verilog or VHDL code into the hardware. So these uh, synthesizable constructs are those which can be translated into a hardware, whereas non-synthesizable are not translated into the hardware. They cannot be converted into a hardware. So, what are the common non-synthesizable constructs are? Uh, like we have the display function, system functions like display, monitor, read, write, stroke. These are all used for displaying the messages or values during the simulation, but they do not have any hardware representation because we do not need them only in the simulation and they don't have any hardware representation. Then we have the delays and time, 
delay functions which can be like uh, real time delays simulation times and much more uh, we can we have like a um task and also task also if you are using uh, in the task if you are using any timing so that is also not synthesizable so uh, linter will check for all this possible things next uh, you can see here i have given a simple example of non synthesizable construct you can see that uh, module is non synthesizable example we have taken a b and c we can see that a and b are the input C is the output and we have a real value R which is 0 0.025 and we are assigning C it's a simple addition R plus A plus B and module but what happens is most of the tools you can see that most of the tools do not guarantee the value of real numbers. the synthesis behavior of real data type is not guaranteed across all the synthesizer so most of the synthesizers they are synthesizers they cannot convert this real value into a hardware representation so that time this comes as a non-synthesizable construct another example we have here sorry on the right side you can see a piece of code so the module name non-synthesizable example reg data just a part of the code i have taken see initial begin we have we are dis using a dollar display initializing data right then you have another non-synthesizable construct dollar display current simulation time and we are trying to display the current simulation time over here in this part of the code and the next part of the code you can see again it is a non-synthesizable construct why because we are using a dollar stop okay so friends what this are these are just but displaying the values and displaying the time this and for stopping the simulation right and then you have you have begin the initial block over here and you have put an end so the initial block is completed over next you have a synthesizable construct some always at the positive of the clock and some synthesizable logic right now what happens is you can see it contains three parts which are not synthesizable as we have already discussed the first one is dollar display, which is simply used for displaying the values during the simulation, right? And the second one, non-synthesizable construct, which we are having in the right side of the code is dollar time. This system function returns the current simulation time in simulation cycles. We know that, right? So this is also cannot be converted into a hardware representation, right? Then dollar stop. This system task is used to stop the simulation immediately. So again, this is also not synthesizable. So these are the some examples I have given here to make you understand what are non-synthesizable construct. So a linter should be able to trace this type of the non-synthesizable constructs present in your code. Next comes unintentional latches. Unintentional latches are also called as inferred latches are undesirable constructs. We are not creating, they create, they get created on their own. That can occur in the hardware design when synthesis tool cannot determine the value of a register under certain conditions. What happens is if you are not providing all the options for the uh, code, um, so what will happen is it has to uh, recollect what is its previous state. So there a latch is created to uh, keep the uh, memory okay, of the previous state, value of the previous state. See here, the simple example I have used here, begin, I have just taken that part of the code where we can see uh, unintentional latches generated, not the entire. Time. Here we are using suppose a case statement and you can see its input in 1 down to 0. 1 down to 0 is two bits, zero and one, right? So how many combinations we will have? We will have four combinations. But here you can see only three are listed. When IN one is, IN is zero, 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 one, and one, zero. When IN is zero, zero, out is assigned zero, here one, here one, based on certain logic, right? But when both the input bits are one, one, that value is not mentioned in this case statement so again 
a unintentional or inferred latch is created because the other possible value is not so to rectify this what you can do is you can provide all the four values all the four combination values or by default you can add a default state and you can mention the output right so this is one of the example for an unintentional latch using a case when you are using a case statement you should be very much uh, clear whether uh, and you should know that if it should not create any unintentional latch if you are using a if statement then also there are the chances of generating unintentional latches you can see here always this is an unintentional latch example here i have taken enable data result this is for an example okay so always at enable data you can see if enable is present data is assigned to result okay and this is the small piece of code but you can see that when enable is present if enable then data is assigned to result if there is no enable or enable value is false then what is the value of result that is not mentioned so again there is a chance of getting a latch create so if you are writing a if statement so better you go for the else if this is true okay this is the condition which will happen if this is not true then if we have this possible option next comes the combinational loop combinational loop is created when output of a logic gate is fed back to the same gate okay uh, or another gate earlier in the combinational block but not sequential is involved right so here you can say uh, that always at a b or c oh, sorry always at a or b two inputs are there a and b both are present in the sensitivity list right and what we are doing is we are again giving a plus b back to a right a is added with b and it is again assigned to a so this is a combinational loop combinational loop is not allowed so this is one of the check in linked right then unconnected ports this mainly comes when you are instantiating a module in a another module right so for that suppose if i am instantiating a gate then i have the two inputs a b and c is my output but see a is not properly connected to any port b is connected to b c is connected to c but a is left so if such thing happens in your code then the linter must put you a message that this is a problem of unconnected port next comes a multi driven ports multi driven ports in vertical log occurs when a signal or a port is being driven by multiple drivers simultaneously okay so this is a most common uh, we can say common error or common warning which we'll get while using the lint so this situation can lead to contention causing unpredictable behavior in the circuit it may result into unpredictable behavior let's understand using an example you can see here always at star means all the inputs and outputs okay uh, all the inputs sorry begin multi driver is assigned a and b okay and and within the same code again you are writing always at uh, star begin asterisk this is begin multi driver is c and b means multi driver port is assigned here a and b and multi driver port is assigned here c and b so there are the chances that this is a and gate output right so a and gate output is one when both the inputs are one so let us assume that a and b both are one so a and b are one so multi driver output over here is one so multi driver is one here but there are the chances that c is zero here d is one so c and d is again zero so here multi driver is zero but you are using that in the same code right so again this is a incorrect thing next is incorrect sensitivity list missing signals in the sensitivity list can lead to mismatch between the pre and the post synthesis simulations right so suppose you have a example for example we have a code where we have two inputs and a single output inputs are a and b suppose output is c now what i am doing is i have taken always at a but i have not mentioned b 
So there are the chances that the code is uh, showing different values before the uh, during the simulation when you are performing before synthesis and the simulation which you perform after synthesis. Next is read and write mismatch. Read rise, uh, read write race occurs when a signal is being read and uh, also written in the same always block or sorry in always uh, blocks in the same code. Okay, like we have always at uh, B C. You can see B and C is assigned to A at the same time in the another always block. You can see that uh, B A X or B is assigned to O. So both are happening in the same code. So this is again not in, uh, not a correct way of writing the code. Next is mismatch in bit width. The LHS width should be same with the RHS width. Now suppose in this piece of code, we will see this in the piece of code. Try to understand this. A and B are the two inputs where you can see that A is 3 down to 0, B is also 3 down to 0. Means both of them are how many bits? 4 bits. And you can see here C and D 4 down to 0, C, D also 4 down to 0. Zero. So these are five bits. Now you can see that assign A. A is assigned C. C is how many bits? Five bits. A is four bits. So larger width to a smaller width. So you are assigning a larger width value to a smaller value, right? Next again, you can see D is assigned B. B is assigned to T. Sorry. So B is how many bits? Four. And D is here five. So smaller is width is assigned to a larger one. So, this should not happen in the code. You should check properly what is the length of the code, what is the width of the uh, net and you should assign top bit overflow. Uh, this is another type of the common uh, errors which the uh, lint tool checks that whether there is any bit overflow in the code or not. Bit overflow in Verilog occurs when the result of an arithmetic operation exceeds the bit width of the destination signal or variable. See here, if you are adding two numbers, suppose for a common example, we'll take, we are adding 5 plus 6. So, what is the result? It is 11. So, it is again two digit number, right? So, when we are doing the same operation in the binary or any uh, number system, we should think that the result of arithmetic operation may take more number of bits than the individual uh, digits are there, right? So here the input is A, B is the another input, C is the output. So you are multiplying A and B and you are assigning to the C and you have taken all the three as same. So uh, there are the chances that the result of these two is a larger value than this, 4 down to 0. So again, there is a bit overflow. So friends, this is all about the lint in uh, RTL linting tool, we can, you know, which we are using in our industry. So I hope this video has given you a uh, idea about what is lint and how uh, it checks and what are the common errors it will try to trace it. And uh, if you are watching for the first time, please subscribe to my channel and. Uh, Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. It gives motivation to make more videos. Thank you guys. Bye.